I'm moving to Arizona next month. Are there a lot of rattlesnakes in My daughter just moved to Arizona and she lives in are there a lot of rattlesnakes there? Which cities and neighborhoods in Arizona have the most rattlesnakes? Whether you're just moving in, you have relatives out here, or you've been living here for a long time and are just realizing rattlesnakes on your patio could be a thing, and you wanna know how likely it is, this is the video for you. Now the first thing to understand is what a rattlesnake needs in order to be able to live and thrive in or nearby neighborhoods. Now if you were to look at your address on Google Earth and zoom out, and surrounding your address, you have habitat that offers food, water, and shelter, such as a native desert, desert washes, or maybe golf courses. A higher likelihood of seeing rattlesnakes, amongst other things like javelina, coyote, a lot of native birds. So something to be aware of is that if you want that desert aesthetic while moving to Arizona, that's something you're gonna have to prepare for is seeing the native wildlife, whether you like the certain species or not. But if you were to look at your address and zoom out and you are in the middle of town and you have layers and layers of streets and suburbia surrounding your address, the likelihood of seeing a rattlesnake in particular is far lower. Rattlesnakes specifically are more specialized in their behaviors, the way that they hunt and the things that they need in order to survive. And they do not do well at all in urban environments. There may be some species of snake that you may see in established suburbia in Arizona, like California king snakes, ground snakes, or gopher snakes. These do a lot better because people are more tolerant of them, and they actually do quite well and thrive on some of the insects and rodents that we have introduced into suburbia. But rattlesnakes specifically, your risk is very, very low. And it's as easy as that. Go take a look at your address on Google Earth. Zoom out, look at the surrounding areas, and you'll be able to assess fairly quickly whether or not your likelihood of seeing a rattlesnake is high or low. In this episode, you'll see us as a team go out on a couple relocation calls in these perfect neighborhoods for rattlesnakes. So I'm headed to a community center in North Phoenix. Uh, there's a rattlesnake that's there. I don't know much else than that. Now let's see what we get. One of these, one of these. Get one of these guys. Let's see what we got. Oh yeah. He's been, he's been all over he, she, whatever. Been all yeah. over. I bet. Yeah, it's a little girl. I'm gonna take a picture real fast. I know. She's got a short tail. Oh, you see how the tail? Says it's a girl. Yep. There's a short tail, and there's also you can see how it uh, it diminishes a little bit. So like she's got a skinny body, yeah. but then the tail is even skinnier oh, than the body right there. Skinny. Yeah, she wants to go. That's the easiest thing to do. Look at you! Wow. Yeah, they're once you get to know them, they're not so bad. She just wants to. Yeah, stay there. There was another one over here this morning, and it was long, but we don't know where he went. Okay, well, let's take a look around. Okay. Yeah, the best thing, if possible, I think we probably we've probably talked about it before, but the only thing I've talked about with you is just if the lantana. Underneath these, even if you trim them up, see all that stuff under there? That's what they like. These oh, are like real, these are cool. They like the water. Yeah, so okay. like two thirds of the things that a snake's looking for okay. with something that not only doesn't provide as much ground cover but doesn't need as much water. This is like it's like a little oasis, you yeah. know. So if there's one, there's another, right? No, not really. This time of year, there there may be just because there's they're looking for similar things. It's not always that they're associated with each other. I mean, they are, but also it's like how you might run into somebody at Circle K in the morning. Yeah. You don't know them, but you're there for the same thing. Yeah, like, so this has all this space under here. Yep. And it gathers water and rodents nest in it and all kinds of stuff, so. Okay. Okay, no other snakes were found, but it does raise some interesting conversation here um, because We've been to this property 14 times this year, and you know it's not a it's not a house. It's a it's a um, an area joining a public area. So there's a lot of other considerations here, but the biggest thing is that there is 
there's water availability all over the place and there's landscaping that uh, not only needs all that water but also creates cover. So this is a really good example of what we say when we say that this is an optional thing, that rattlesnake encounters are largely predictable and preventable. There's also a lot of drip systems and things like native plants. There's a buckthorn choya, it does not need, or buckthorn choya doesn't need um, water on it. It's got a drip system on it, it's killing the plant. Um, there's a brittle bush over there that has a drip system. There's a palo verde that has a drip on it. These are not plants that need daily water. These are not plants that ever, you know, need necessarily water uh, other than what is natural here. So all this creates this, this situation, especially when it's dry, that the snakes in the area have to come in to use it. So, you know, at some point we keep relocating snakes and catching snakes in these areas. The landscaping itself is the problem. The snakes are not the problem. They are brought in. They're a symptom of the actual problem, which is the landscaping. So uh, I am trying again to get in front of the, uh, the board that manages the landscaping here uh, to make this case. You know, we'll keep catching snakes if that's what they want to do, but it's not necessary. These are it's a bigger picture of what happens at all these houses, or largely there's a lot you can do that has, you know, long before a snake shows up, you can be thinking about how to keep snakes away. Okay, found a pretty good spot here. Underneath this Palo Verde and this drainage, alongside, uh, what dug into a lot of this caliche, there's a deep, cave there. I want to make sure that's what it actually is. Mm, yeah, actually, I'm wrong. I don't like that. That's why we check. The reason we got to be so careful, it's not hot yet. It's 98 degrees right now, um, but it's going to go up by another 10 degrees or so in the next hour. Sometimes we're not on flat ground. There's a lot of different ways of working with a bucket is challenging. Okay, now I gotta get the snake to go into the place that I want. She's a pretty sweet little snake too. She's not really being problematic. I want her to crawl up into that hole. This part's a little bit like bowling. People ask about that a lot. Like, why are you stressing the snake out? Just let it go. You're stressing it out. Well, we need to. What's the point if we just let it crawl off into the sun and die? And yeah, a bush like this, a brittle bush, or these... If it crawled under that rock to hide from me, it's stuck there and it's gonna die there. So that's why we have to be careful. The job is to have the snake live, not move a snake. All right. And now that snake is protected from the sun for the day. But as long as it stays in there, come on. <laughs> what are you doing? Boop, all right. Did I just say boop? I'm gonna have to do some soul searching after that one. <sighs> Everyone headed to a call right now. A lady said her landscapers saw a rattlesnake. It went behind her trash bins. She hasn't went out to check it out yet, yet but I guess this all just happened. So should still be back there because it's quite warm out. So I'm gonna, I'm about to pull up right now, get the snake. Yeah. All right. It came. He walked in the gate, uh -huh. and a few swear words, he was looking straight ahead, but it came down the, that fence line and okay. got behind. Yeah. This is kind of where you last saw it, though? Yeah, it went behind the blue bin. Oh, so uh, um, if you could go in there, this little area. Yeah, yeah, because if he's not here, it seems like he was. He could have gone right there. Yeah. Are you, are you pretty sure he didn't double back either? No. Okay. I was trying to watch, but then I was afraid that you were going to call. Gotcha. So I gave you the other number. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes it... Uh... He's not behind these, so... Let me just scope the rest of your backyard out. Yeah. All right. Doesn't look like he's in your house or your yard. You know, it makes sense that he would have gone Yeah. He just he lost said, it behind the bin. He, and he, he couldn't see it. Couldn't see it, yeah. Okay. That's what I was like. I, I wonder if it went in their patio. Yeah.
Oh, there he is. <laughs> He's just coiled up in the corner. Hi, little buddy. Yeah, this is a nice spot. <laughs> Hey, little bud. What are you doing out in the sun? Hi. Where are we going? summer now so that means I have to put some water in the bucket for the snake and it's not so much for drinking which yeah cool if he wants to take a drink or she I haven't looked if it's a male or female but more so that it's hot and uh, even on a 10 minute hike into the desert the snake can die from overheating if it uh, gets too hot in the bucket it's not ice cold water. See, I don't want it to shock the snake. Um, you know, ice cold water is not really good for reptiles, but uh, it's just cool enough so that when I hike it in, the snake's not going to overheat in the bucket and we will be okay. All right. It's a beautiful rattlesnake here. It's very light. Did you get a drink, little one? Did you get a drink? Go ahead. You can just drink if you want to. I'll dump that water at the end. Oh, we're not climbing. Nope, we're not climbing. There you go. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. See you later, little one. Let me get this water for you. I'm kind of amazed that that snake was actually out. The uh, the pool guy actually, I thought it was the landscaper, but the pool guy actually walked in the back gate and the snake was coming, trying to get out of the backyard, it seemed like. Uh, he was fumbling with the gate. It would be funny if you guys could see the video. And uh, he was like fumbling, trying to get out of the gate because it was kind of coming, it was not coming at him, but it was coming towards him because was, he was at the gate and it was trying to get out of the gate, but it's hot. Like this just happened like, I don't know, probably 30 minutes ago and it's it's 100 degrees out, which is hot to be out, especially on turf, that turf gets hot. So I don't know what that snake was doing. It was trying to find a shady spot. I checked her backyard first, even though it was towards the gate, but then I checked her neighbor's front courtyard and that's, that's where the snake nestled up and it was probably gonna stay there for the remainder of the day at least. But they have a lot of desert near them, so I just found it a good spot back out in the desert. It's kind of cool that she got it all on video. So we just got a little bit of surprise rain, which is amazing. Just kind of came out of nowhere. I went in my office for like a minute and came out, and there was uh, lightning all around. So I'm headed to a call right now. I guess Marissa was there yesterday and got a snake, and they have another one today. So those can be interesting. Anyway, I'll be there in about 20 minutes. What's hey, up, Ryan? how are you doing? I'm good, how are you? Good, so Marissa was here yesterday, huh? Yeah, so okay. we're, we're two for two. I guess. So, so. she gave us some good advice because uh, there was a big hole uh -huh. by the pool equipment. Uh -huh. um, and so she said, you might want to put some water in there and flood it out. Yeah, you know? so yeah. My wife did that and sure enough, one All comes right. out. But, uh, cool. <laughs> so, the uh, so it's out in the back in the in a cooler, uh -huh. so it's already captured. Okay, well I'd like to look around if I can too. Yeah, I was, might I, as well. I would really appreciate it if you yeah, did. Yeah, this all this stuff. This is uh, yeah. There's there's a lot moving tonight. So I'm sorry. There's gonna be a lot moving tonight. A lot of snakes be because of the weather. Yeah, they got they got a little chance to drink. Even if they don't actually get rain, it feels like rain, and the pressure is just bottomed out. Oh really? So those are indicators that they'll come out and, oh, that's and, interesting. and they they'll try to move. And so, it's just out of curiosity, how'd you get into this? Like. Uh, we're just all snake nerds. Yeah, we found a way to to cheat cheat adulthood. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so oh, really? One yesterday okay. Was on the driveway. There's another one. What? Oh. Unless it escaped out of the cooler. Huh? Unless it escaped from the cooler. I don't think it escaped from the cooler. Okay. It's an adult, so let me grab him real fast. So they're just heading out to go do their stuff for the night. Oh, there you go. Rattle. Where are you? We got number three. 
Oops, watch out. There we go. Third one. All right, I'll grab your other one real quick while I'm... Okay, this is a pretty good size one, so hopefully it stays in there when I'm doing this. We'll see. Yeah, two big males. So that's... It's good news because they're here for a very specific reason. Yeah. Uh, I would just keep doing what you're doing. So that hole that's there, yeah. um, flood it, collapse it, flood it, collapse it. Okay. Uh, the good news is because they were most likely here for the female, it's a temporary situation. So that worked out good. Two snakes. I always like it when I get called for one and end up with two or three or four or whatever. Hey everybody. I am headed out to Queen Creek yet again to go get a rattlesnake, I guess, that is sitting under a piece of wood. I don't know what that means, but it should be fun. These neighborhoods that often have the most rattlesnakes are the ones that aren't just on the edge of the desert, but the ones that are uh, permeated through the desert and have left the let the desert kind of exist in between the houses. The rattlesnakes can actually hold on and kind of use those in-between areas as like travel corridors and things. I love that they do it, by the way. It's great that there's habitat going through. I love that people like to preserve that instead of kind of just make a concrete cookie cutter neighborhood. That being said, all wildlife can get through it. Over there? Over here? Okay. Morning. Where? Let's see. Right under the lot. Okay. Okay. Let's see. Oh yeah. Okay. It's all sleeping. Yeah. Oh, not anymore. <laughs> not sleeping anymore. <laughs> all right. Oh, geez. Okay, usually I offer to let people look at it, but this one's a little bit spicy, so. Yeah. <laughs> You've been looking at it for a long time, right? <laughs> yes. So what do you do with this guy? Uh, I'm just gonna take him out to state land far enough where he's not yeah. gonna see people anymore. I'm deep into some good desert. I always point these out, because I think they're cool. These ironwood trees, like that big ball of this tree could be very well hundreds of years old, the way that these grow and how slow they are, given all that growth right there. I am on a mission to get this snake into a good spot. Ah, here we go. Here's a good one. Here's this grumpy. Yeah, you see that right there? So I got to correct myself when I first saw it I'm like oh it's sleeping and you know before my understanding that it had already been seen so sometimes these diamondbacks what they do is when they feel like they don't have any other option like if rattling if striking if running doesn't work then it's kind of like the very very last defense mechanism here where they just hide their head and flatten themselves out like this so what's likely going to happen is the same thing that happened when I initially picked it up is that it's going to like freak out because it's like kind of on last hope mode. Oh, yep. See what I see what I mean? <laughs> okay. You can do it. There's a hole. Come on. You see the hole? You see it? Drop behind you. Come on, buddy. Oh, there we go. See that? Whoop! All right. All right, well, that was a nice, cool Sunday morning relocation. I'm gonna go home, have some breakfast, hang out with the family, so we can get back at it this, this week. 